day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel. And today we're talking about the five biggest myths of opening a business. This is fitting because yesterday I did the five biggest myths on personal finance. The day before I did the five biggest myths on the stock market. And today we're doing business. So we'll have covered all three subjects I talk about on the channel, stock market, personal finance, and business. So let's go ahead and get right into this, guys. If you like this whole series I did here, hit a thumbs up today. I would love to see that. And let's get into this. So number one, biggest myth of all is you need a ton of money to start a business. That is absolutely, positively a myth. Most businesses you start, can you can start that for $10,000 or less. And most people, you know, can save $10,000. Some can save it within a few months. Some can save it within a year, two years. But the fact of the matter is, guys, most businesses can be started for under $10,000 a year. So this whole notion that, oh, I need $50,000, $100,000, $200,000 to start a business, it's just completely false. A few industries, you do need that much money, but it's, a very, it's very few and far between. Most businesses, you can start for under 10 k I know my business personally, which is kind of actually an expensive industry to get into, photography and videography in the high-end space, I started that for around five, six thousand dollars, guys. Uh, and how did I do that? I only bought what was absolutely necessary. That's one of the keys when you're starting a business: buy what's absolutely necessary. So many people, when they go to start a business, they buy so much crap that they think they might maybe use, and they're like, "Oh, let's just get that. Oh, let's just get that in case we need it." No, buy what is absolutely necessary. And when the other things are absolutely necessary and your customers absolutely want that, then you can go ahead and add those on as additions because then it's proven that your customers are craving that or they want that really bad. So buy only what's necessary. And at the same time, make sure you're shopping around. That's something I do very well. I shop around places. I see, you know, what's the price at this website? What's the price at this website? Can I buy something refurbished for, you know, a good amount cheaper than buying something new? I prefer to buy new, but sometimes I'll buy, you know, refurbished equipment. Same thing if you're starting a restaurant or something like that, guys. You can, anyway, anything you start, try to shop around. See where you can get things cheaper and where you can cut costs. Only buy what's necessary. There's so many, so much money I could have spent spent on other things that weren't really necessary, like extra batteries for things. Like for instance, my drone, $150 per battery. I only bought two batteries because I know that I'm probably not going to need more than two batteries ever. I could have went out and bought four or five. That would have been a waste of money in my opinion. And I also bought a charger that goes in my car that I can actually plug regular devices into. So that saved me on batteries for all my equipment. Because now when I drive from job to job, I can actually charge my equipment at the same time, guys. So it's about thinking outside the box, thinking about ways to save money, and that way you can avoid that number one myth of needing a fortune to start a company. It's absolutely false, guys, and it scares a lot of people away, and it's just not correct at all. Number two, owning your own business is can be more time-consuming than actually owning or uh, having a regular job. That's a big myth, guys. That some, you know, it's just fabricated out there that, oh my gosh, if you start a business, you're gonna be working so much. You're gonna be working so much more than if you just had a regular job. I can tell you from personal experience, that's absolutely false, once again, guys. I was working 50 hours a week when I worked a regular job. Now I work 30 to 40 hours a week on my actual business. 30 to 40 hours a week. And how do I manage to do that? Because I make a lot more per hour now because I own my own business versus before when I had to split the profits with you know a million different employees and whatnot. So that is a false notion that, oh my gosh, if I start a business, I'm going to be so overwhelmed. And you know, I need to be single if I'm going to start a business because if I have a family, it's going to be impossible, blah, blah, blah. No, not at all, guys. It's really not. And you can save a lot of time, especially once you get in it, you get rolling in it, you'll realize ways you can cut time by significant amounts. For instance, I remember when I first started doing my first job, I remember my first job, the house, it took me two days to do it. Two days. Now a house takes me about an hour to two to do the same amount of work that I did in that first house. That took me two days. Now I do it in about an hour or two. So you're going to find over time, whatever you're doing, you're going to be way quicker at it in the future than you are now, which is going to save you a lot of time, guys. Number three, meaningful amounts of money will start to come to me after the first month. The first month will be hard, but after that, we'll be okay. We're going to start having lots of money come in. Once again, guys, this is another big myth. It's another big myth. 
money isn't necessarily going to come after the first month. Sometimes it takes several months of getting the ball rolling until you start having any type of meaningful income come in. I know for me personally, it took until about month six till meaningful amounts of money started to come in. It took me six months. And the reason being, when you're starting a fresh new business that hasn't been created before, you need to prove yourself to customers that either are desperate or they take a chance on you. And then you have to delight those customers and then they become regular customers and then you can go ahead and hopefully those customers will tell someone else who will then become your customer as well. So that takes a while. So whether you start a business like mine, which is photography, videography, I needed people to take chances on me. They did. I had to delight them. And then they, you know, became regular customers and they told other people. Or whether you're starting a burger stand. You know, if you start a burger stand, people aren't just going to come there, you know, automatically because there's a million other burger stands out there. How do they know yours? You either need people that are desperate to eat something and they happen to come by. Or you need people just to take a chance and say, hey, you know what, you see that new burger stand down this, the street? Let's go and try that tonight. And then you have to prove yourself when you get that opportunity and then they become a regular customer and they tell other people. That's when meaningful amounts of money to come in. And usually it takes six months. Sometimes it takes a year, guys. So that's why I say if you're going to start a business, make sure you are planning on making no money for the first six months. Just plan on it. Hopefully, you actually do make some money in the first six months, but just plan on like you make nothing. That way, you'll have plenty of money socked away for your bills and whatnot, and you're not going to stress over it those first six months. Just plan on it because most businesses, not a lot of money is going to come that first six months, guys. I just <laughs> almost guarantee you that. Step number four, the myth number four is I need a college degree. A lot of people think you need a college degree to run a business. And re the reason being is all the big companies out there, we all see what are their CEOs and CFOs, all the executives have, they all have college degrees, guys. Almost every big company you see out there, they all have college degrees. But what you don't see is the ones that actually created those companies, many of them do not have college degrees. Many of them are either high school dropouts or college dropouts, guys. The ones that actually start the business. Now, later on down the road, when that business becomes a huge business, then, you know, the people with college degrees begin to step in and they kind of begin to run the business. But the ones that actually started it, the ones that got it off the ground, many times, guys, they don't have college degrees. They're just very smart as far as business goes. They know how to work a business. They know a market to go after. They think outside the box, which sometimes, you know, if you have a college degree, sometimes college can put you in a mindset of thinking like everybody else. It, it, sometimes that's what college can do to some people. So if you don't have a college degree, you might not have all the intelligence in the world and know this and know that, and you might have to learn things as you go along. But at the same time, if you can think outside the box and you're very smart as far as when it comes to business, that's all you need. That is all you need in the end to create a successful small business and then grow it as time goes on. And then if you need people that have college degrees to specialize in things, then you start bringing those people in. Myth number five is I need a partner. If I'm going to start a business, I need someone else to work alongside me. I need a partner. I need someone to grow the business with. Once again, a myth, absolutely. You don't need anybody. You need yourself, and that's it. That's it. Now, in some industries, you might need employees right off the bat, you know, because it'd be really hard to start a business by yourself. Absolutely. There's some industries like, that are like that, but most businesses, you can start it just yourself. You can be the accounting department, you can be the sales department, you can be the one that does all the jobs, does whatever you do. You can start yourself, and I, I suggest that be the way it's done, unless you have a partner that is so passionate about whatever you're doing, and they actually came to you with, with the idea, and you guys brainstormed it together, and you're that passionate together that you know it will work. If that, Unless that's the case, you don't need a partner, because a partner sometimes can hold you back. Because when you're starting a business, a lot of times you need to make moves, very quickly and pivot and do different things in other industries. And if you are with a partner, what can happen is that can slow down the process because sometimes that partner might not see things the way you see them and they might disagree with you. And then that slows down the whole process. And then you become disgruntled because you're like, damn it, we need to go this route. We, you know, we thought we were going to start the business this way, but we need to go this route. And if they're pushing back and saying, no, 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 we don't do that. 
you're going to end up disgruntled. They're probably going to end up disgruntled because things are probably still going to keep going bad. And then you might end up saying, you know what, I don't care what you think. And you might end up getting a big fight. So a partner in business can hold you back when you're starting it, actually. It can hold you back greatly. So unless you have someone that you're super passionate about the business as well, and they came to you with ideas well, and you know you guys are like this as far as the idea goes, unless that's the case, do not start a business with a partner. It's a horrible idea, guys. So let me know what you guys think about these five myths about starting a business. I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this series and if you would like more series where I try to tie all three of the subjects together. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed creating the series and trying to think of what are the five biggest myths of stock market? What are the five biggest myths of personal finance? What are the five biggest myths of of you know, uh, starting a business. So I really enjoyed this series with you guys today. If you're happening to watch us and you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed, you may want to. I talk about personal finance on the channel. I talk about stock market the most on the channel. And we talk about entrepreneurship. I'm an entrepreneur and I give entrepreneur tips just like we did in today's video. Thank you for watching today, guys, and have a great day.